another super quick and easy soup. It's Even the simple quicker. and smooth asparagus soup. And this is a great, again, basic recipe um, that works well with all vegetables. You could substitute broccoli, you could substitute tomatoes, you could substitute corn and chucked off the cob. Um, just whatever's in season, whatever you like, cauliflower, celery, you name it, uh, roasted peppers, for, it's just, it all works. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. All right. So, what we're going to do ah, is very much similar to what Lizzie did. Asparagus are in season right now. They're actually a member of the lily family and they come shooting up through the ground this time of year and it's just one of our joyous things of spring. Um, asparagus are one of the highest vegetables in folate. Again, we were talking about beans and being good source of folate. We wanna cut the tips off the asparagus and on a diagonal so that it all looks like little tips and it all is little tips, but it gives it a better look. And we do that by making, cutting it on an angle like that, just sort of making them. And these have already been washed. We should have brought our little salad spinner because we love to use that for washing just about everything. And we reserve the tips off to the side and cut the rest of it just in like two inch chunks. That's not going? No. Well, that's odd. Is there a technical person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll just leave it for you, a second. You, maybe you, it'll, maybe yeah. it'll heat. It's a stainless steel pot, so it should be working. Well, we'll pretend that it's working. And it keeps turning itself off. How cute. Maybe I'll try to unplug it and replug it in. Maybe that'll work. Okay, like Lizzie was saying, cutting an onion, super easy. Lop off the top. Always set things on their flat surface mm -hmm. to cut it so they don't go rolling around. Peel it in half, I mean cut it in half. Take the first layer of that um, that's next to the paper layer off because generally it can be a little bruisey or moldy like that or, or cut and um and it just it's it's kind of tough again go around okay, we're doing it this way once you know how to do a few of these little tricks it makes cuttings and cooking so much easier the onion just falls into place a lot of times you'll see people cut it this way too no need there's all these little rings when it gets to the end just flip it to the side Cut through it. You can use leeks. I think we have, uh, here's a bunch of leeks there. Those are also great. Onions, leeks, garlic, all those members of the allele family have allele sulfides in them, which help relax the blood vessels so that your blood can flow through your vessels more easily and bring nutrients and oxygen to the tissues that require it, which is a good thing. It also helps protect the endothelium, which is the one cell lining thickness of your blood vessels and keeps them nice and happy so that, um, and it also keeps from uh, plaque from forming and it keeps your blood from clotting. So it keeps, it prevents platelet aggregation. So we're going to add a little bit of olive oil to this pan and we're going to pretend it's sizzling. I'm, I'm, I'm trying another pan for you. <laughs> It's all right, we're gonna be done with it by the time it's done there. So, just sizzle, sizzle. <laughs> Let's just see. Okie dokie then. My pan wasn't behaving. Mm -hmm. And it's a stainless steel pan, so who knows. Sometimes these induction pans do not work with um, things that are not um, magnetic. Yeah. So an aluminum pan, go. or as my friend would say, an aluminum pan, <laughs> doesn't work. But here we go. I keep trying Sizzling. to educate. I have a sizzle. The sizzle. Right. The sizzler. Seize so, the sizzle moment. We're adding our onions. We're going to cook those down. We're going to add a cup and or. A quart and a half or six cups of vegetable stock. You could use chicken stock in this if you didn't care about it being vegetarian, which is the same with all of these soups. You could actually have any kind. I should have done this earlier, huh? Yeah. Okay, there you go. And we'll pour, we'll pretend that's cooked down like, like Lizzie did. And we're going to add our vegetable stock. 
This is just about as good as homemade, especially in a soup that's pureed like this. It almost tastes like homemade once you've uh, doctored it up with all these veggies. We're going to put the stems of our asparagus in. We're going to use, again, uh, about a third of a cup of long grain white rice, but it could be medium grain. It doesn't really matter because we're going to puree it all. Again, it's just added to the body of the soup. We're going to cook that covered for about 20 minutes. And this soup, actually, um, I did ahead of time and pureed it in a blender um, to make it really super smooth and creamy. Well, see, that was good. That was, that was worth it. All right, so I'm going to show you back here. We've got it pureed. Nice and pretty. It becomes a nice, smooth and silky soup, which is also, this pot's not working really well. Like this. We're going, ah, technical, technical. We're going to add um, a little bit of lemon juice. Anytime you add a little bit of acid to a, uh, to a soup, it really brightens up the flavor. Thank you. If you roll it around a little bit, it helps bust those little cells up inside. And again, you're getting that fresh lemon taste without any preservatives, and it just takes a second. This is my favorite little gadget. I've had this for about 20 years, and I actually cracked it, which broke my heart, but I have even saved it because I can't find another one exactly like, well, I haven't really looked, I've got to tell you that. I have. You have. <laughs> so they don't exist. I know. So they're pretty easy. So add a little bit of lemon juice to brighten up the flavor. Right in there. Season it with a little salt and pepper. You're allowed to have uh, half a teaspoon of salt. Most of your sodium is coming, 75% of the sodium in your diet comes from processed food. So if you're eating fresh fruits and vegetables, and I just maybe used about a quarter of a teaspoon in this, and it's going to serve six at least people. six people. A little pepper. <laughs> ah! Pepper. Which, if you freshly grind your herbs or spices, bless you, I, this is the pepper getting to you already up there. Uh, they will have a lot more flavor. And then we're going to add the tips back into the soup just to reheat it. And there it looks so pretty. And so you get this t the texture difference again. The health benefits, the taste, the texture. And we're going to garnish this with a little bit of fresh chives from my garden this morning. This is the little step that makes it look like, boy, you really went to the effort, you know, and it's like chives, come on. And so we'll put a little, little soup in here. Like Stacy said, these things fill you up. They're mostly water broth vegetables. It's a great way to get vegetables into your family's mm -hmm. diet, into your own diet. They're quite filling. And I'm going to put a little bit of a garnish of some uh, Greek-style yogurt on here. Here's a quick trick. If you don't have a little pastry bag, get just a plastic bag and fold it over your hand so that you have a little triangle there, a little, little pouch. Toss. Whatever you're wanting, if you, this works great for making canapes or if you have to put squirt cheese on a, you know, something on a cracker or a little topping. Make a little turnip. Cut the end off. I didn't really get it all off there, but that's okay. And then you can just swirl. Very pretty. It's the finishing touch Garnish. that makes the difference. And. It's all in the presentation. You eat with your eyes first. This is why you go out and see vegetables are so affordable. And this would make a, a, just a nice good pile of veggies of soup. So, and again, it freezes well. It's great for you. And it's delish. Yes, I actually, do I trim the ends of the asparagus off? Exactly, and let me, oh gosh, I hope I don't dismantle this entire thing. Um, as you can see at the bottom, there's a very woody part of the asparagus, and um, I had done that first when I, before I, and they say if you break an asparagus, 
it will, well that's even broken up way up. It will tend to break especially where, um, where it breaks best. But then but you um, have to hold it. You really, yeah. I guess I didn't have my did. lever point right. Yeah. And then, but then once you've broken one, just tip them all to the end so that you have them all the same length, and then cut it so you don't have to sit there for you know breaking tons and tons of asparagus. Because that we do the same thing with green beans. We'll just cut off the ends and you know line them all up and then flip them around rather than snap each bean like Grandma used to do on the porch. We don't have that kind of time. Of course, Grandma wasn't twittering. And many of us don't have that kind of porch. <laughs> or that kind of porch, exactly. Um,